Hey, welcome into another episode of the Fat Guy Podcast. This is the third podcast in our Keto 101 series. This will be Keto 101 Drinks and Sweets. I am the Fat Guy. Most people just call me Brett. Glad to have you along, whether this is your uh, first time checking us out or you're a, uh, a loyal listener. And uh, if we've helped you in some way, I'm uh, truly honored to be a part of that process. And I uh, appreciate you uh, spreading the word. Um, God, in the last year and a half or so I've been keto, I can't tell you how many people I've helped. And it's, it is my passion. It is the thing that keeps me going. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a medical doctor. I have no formal medical training. And while I have spent hundreds and hundreds of hours pouring through the medical uh, literature and um, studying uh, weight loss and uh, particularly uh, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes and these types of things, uh, I have no formal medical training. You shouldn't construe anything I say as medical advice or uh, dietary or weight loss advice is specific for you. These are simply my opinions and my personal experiences that I'm sharing. Uh, you should always consult with a doctor before beginning any kind of a health uh, diet or weight loss uh, regimen. Follow us on social media. Fat Guy Podcast is a username. You can uh, uh, get us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook using the username Fat Guy Podcast. And if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, by all means do. Uh, if you're familiar with podcasts and you're listening now using uh, Apple Podcast on your iOS device or maybe uh, the Google Play Store on your Android device, then you uh, already know how to find podcasts and we're there. Just search for Fat, Fat Guy Podcast and subscribe. If you're not familiar with how podcasting works, the easiest, simplest thing to do is go download a free app. It's called... Uh, the Spreaker app, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, Spreaker. Download the Spreaker app. Once you download it, search for Fat Guy Podcast. Hit that heart button. Subscribe to the podcast. Uh, sign up to get notifications. And not only will you know when new podcasts come out, but you can scroll back and you can see every podcast we've ever done. So if you missed our first two Keto 101 podcasts, Meat and Veggies, uh, you can go back and check those out. Uh, the other cool thing about that is it's not just my podcast that's hosted on there. Everybody that uses the company I use is on there. And so there's literally thousands and thousands of podcasts. Who knows what you'll find? I highly recommend the Spreaker app. It's free. Go check it out today. Uh, last little bit of business, I guess, is if you'd like to support me, and that would be greatly appreciated. I am working right now towards paying the uh, uh, upcoming bill for uh, podcasting hosting for the next year. That's my first priority. So if you'd like to chip in and help with that, five bucks would go a long way. Um, if five bucks is a lot to you, then I don't want your money. But if you can spare five bucks and uh, you think what we're doing is meaningful, by all means, head on over to KetoAnimal.com. K-E-T-O-Animal.com. KetoAnimal.com. Um, that will redirect you to my Patreon page. And uh, scroll down the Patreon page. Five bucks gets you in to be the Keto Warrior. And you'll get a few perks for that. One, we'll give you a shout out on future episodes. So you get to hear your name on the podcast. Uh, I want to recognize you as sponsoring what we do. And uh, secondarily, um, there's a couple things. I will do a uh, Patreon sponsor only audio, a uh, little mini podcast uh, that you'll be able to access over on the Patreon member page. And also there's a community tab there. And um, you can ask me questions, and you get moved to the front of the line. I try to answer everybody's questions, and I try to help everybody. But uh, my sponsors of the podcast, uh, you're my most special people, and I'll move you right to the front of the line. So there's some benefits in there for you. Uh, the biggest reason to do it, though, is to help me help other people, because I really love it, and you can be a part of that. So again, the easy way to get there is to go to ketoanimal.com. All right, Keto 101. Drinks and sweets. Or is it drinks and tweet, uh, treats? Either way. So I'm going to ask a lot about this. People asking what, what can you drink, what can, can't you drink, etc. I think it goes without saying. It should go without saying, first of all, that anything has sugar in it is out. So, you know, Coke, Mountain Dew, Dr. Pepper, these uh, energy drinks, uh, your sweet tea, whether it be the sweet tea your grandma makes or the sweet tea you get from Mickey D's, <laughs> all that's out. Uh, it's just sugar, and we're getting rid of the sugar. The sugar is what's made us all fat, so it's got to go. So I think that 
pretty easily goes without saying. Some other things you may not think about quite so much. Uh, milk, you wouldn't think would fall into this category, but milk has a lot of carbs. I think a glass of milk has something like 12 carbs, which is over half your total car uh, carbs for a day that you should be eating on keto. So, uh, milk is definitely out. Um, you're basically going to be drinking a lot of water. Um, so, we're going to talk about drinking water and then what other things and how you should drink them. So if you're primarily in this for weight loss or diabetes, either one and both, and they're kind of both the same, uh, fat belly, when you have a fat belly, that's just the first symptom of, di of diabetes. It's the first one you see. It, it comes before they say you got prediabetes and prediabetes comes before they say you got diabetes. Uh, I like to call fat belly pre-prediabetes. And they don't diagnose you as that, but that's what you got. So even though we're trying to treat your weight, we're really treating diabetes. Let's just be honest. So the object to all that is to keep your insulin low. You want to keep your insulin low. And especially for weight loss, that aspect of it. The longer you can keep your insulin at a low base level, the faster you'll burn fat. And so you have to start thinking about your day in terms of how many times am I willing to spike my insulin, you know? And this means things like snacking is out. And I, a lot of people are devastated by this. But honestly, once you get into a ketogenic diet and you have a low level blood sugar all the time, you won't be craving snacks and sweets all the time. Sure, it may come along occasionally. But this whole idea of snacking is something sold to us by the food industry. The food industry has sold you on this idea that you need snacks during out the day, and you just don't. Uh, your great-grandma and grandpa and your great-great-grandma and grandpa didn't have no snacks. They sat down and had good, wholesome meals from Whole Foods. And uh, this is something that's been sold to us in the last uh, 50 to 75 years by the food industry through TV and radio, and it's made us think you got to have snacks. Uh, you don't. You don't want to spike your uh, insulin and blood sugar in between meals. You just want to have a good meal. Uh, to that end, uh, that's why everybody that I work with, I, I say, you know what, that first week or so, you're just trying to get used to eating the right things and eating a lot of keto stuff so you don't deal with cravings. Uh, so you can eat your three meals a day or whatever, but you know, starting around that 10 day to two week mark, uh, we all move to two meals a day, which is basically lunch and dinner. Why? Because you don't need breakfast. Most people aren't even hungry at breakfast, especially when you're on a keto diet. And your maximum fat burn comes in those morning hours from the time you wake up till the time you make it to lunch. That's when you burn the most fat by not eating. So that's ultimately where we're going to move to. But if you just keep that in mind, I think it'll help guide you un in understanding how to drink what, when, and where. So there's things out there like Coke Zero, which I love, by the way. Um, there's Diet Coke. Everybody's got a diet. There's a Diet Pepsi, a Diet... All this stuff is out there. You can have uh, your sweet tea and sweeten it with... Um, you know, if you're at a restaurant, they're going to have the, the pink pack, the yellow pack, and the blue pack or whatever. Um, you definitely don't want the yellow pack. Uh, most people think that's best Splenda. But Splenda, the first ingredient in Splenda is dextrose, which is sugar. There's actually more sugar in a packet of Splenda than there is uh, uh, the actual uh, sucralose. <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, definitely going to spike your blood sugars. That being said, it's not a huge amount, and it's a taller amount if you plan for it. So this is what I tell people. You want to have a, you know, a Coke Zero a day, or you feel like you need to work that in, or you feel like you need some tea that you sweeten up with some Splenda or some Stevia or, uh, you know, whatever. Um, have that with a meal when you're going to be spiking your insulin and blood sugar anyway. That's when you have it. Because the ugly truth is, is that even these zero calorie sweeteners cause an insulin spike. Your body is a well-trained machine, and it knows when a sweet taste hits its tongue that carbs and sugar are coming, and it sends out the troops. It sends out the insulin in preparation of handling it. And uh, this has been shown in study after study for 99% of these sweeteners. And I think on the ones that they claim don't do anything, I think the jury's actually out on those. So I don't differentiate between them. We treat them all the same. 
So these artificial or non or nat or even the natural non sugar sweeteners that are out there, and stevia is natural. Um, uh, I believe erythritol is considered natural. It's a sugar alcohol. You just have all these different things. They all the body tastes that sweet taste on the tongue, and it anticipates that sugar's coming, and it does an insulin spike. So you don't drink these things between meals because once your meal is over. You want your sugar or your your uh, glucose levels and your insulin levels to start. You want your insulin to handle the sugar, and once it handles it, you want them all to start falling and continue to fall until the next meal. So enjoy your Coke Zero with your lunch, or enjoy the Coke Zero with the dinner. And I'm going to use Coke Zero because that's the one I like. But I'm not endorsing it, and I'm not saying it's better than Diet Coke or better than Diet Mountain Dew. Or I'm not saying that. It's just the one that I drink. So that's the one I'm going to use in my examples. Um, but if I'm going to have a Diet Coke, I have it with a meal. I don't sit around in the middle of the day drinking a Diet Coke by itself. If you're going to be drinking something in the middle of the day... You're going to be drinking water, okay? Now, what other things can you drink? Um, the only other really thing that I would say drinking at specific times, and this is kind of going to be based on how you feel, and this is really going to be something you're going to have to get used to from being keto enough to know your body, but losing electrolytes is an issue, and I highly recommend that uh, anybody that does keto to do electrolytes. Now, I'm not going to include an electrolytes in my Keto 101 because I've already done an electrolyte podcast. So if you scroll back to previous podcasts, you'll see one that talks about electrolytes. So I'm not going to get into that here. But if you get into a situation where you're a little low on electrolytes or whatever, and it's just a little low, you can grab you a Powerade Zero, not a regular Powerade, and not a Gatorade Zero either. Gatorade Zero has sugar in it. Powerade Zero does not. But Powerade Zero has a little sodium, a little potassium in it to give you a little boost. So you could have have one of those if it's needed. But you don't sit around drinking them every day. Um, so that kind of handles the drinks part, I think. Uh, the last thing I'll say about that is uh, the sweetener that I use uh, to sweeten my unsweet tea. Um, and I use it in some recipes. It's Drops. It is a blend of stevia and monk fruit. Now, monk fruit is one of those that has been shown to have zero impact on insulin and zero impact on blood sugar. I don't know if that's conclusive, but since it has the best research out of any of them and it tastes the most like sugar to me, that's the one that I use. Now, monk fruit alone is uh, very expensive. But if you get this monk fruit slash stevia blend, you get the best of both worlds. You get a little stevia, which has a lot of great research behind it, too. And it since it's mixed together, it kind of lowers the price so that monk fruit is affordable. The brand that I get uh, is called Easy Sweets. And I believe the, the end of sweets is a Z and not an S. So it's E-Z, the letter E, the letter Z, Easy Sweets. And they make several products, okay? They make more than just the Stevia Monk Fruit Blend. The Stevia Monk Fruit Blend is in an orange container. It's an orange container. So I get it from Amazon. You go to Amazon, search Easy Sweets uh, Monk Fruit, I think. Probably will help you find it quickly. And make sure you're buying the orange container. And I put about one drop of that per ounce, you can do a little less uh, than one per ounce, but that's just a good rough judge to know where you're going to be. So if you have you a 16-ounce tea glass, uh, you're going to be putting between t probably 12 to 16 drops in there. And it is the closest thing to sugar I, I have found uh, for, for drinks, like uh, unsweet tea. Uh, on the flip side of that, uh, a majority of the time, I don't even sweeten my unsweet tea because I've just grown to enjoy unsweet tea. And if you're a sweet tea enthusiast, you're probably curling your toes right now going, oh, God. But I promise you, once you get the carbs out of your system and once you get used to not bombarding your body with sugar all the time, that you'll start to enjoy the taste of things that aren't sweet. And uh, unsweet tea actually has a pleasant flavor, and I do enjoy it, although I do uh, also sweeten it with the, the Easy Sweet sweetener as well. So I have it both ways. Let's move to desserts. So people are like, well, man, what can I have for desserts? What can I do for dessert? Desserts are a slippery slope. 
Um, I think it's unreasonable for you as a person on a ketogenic diet to think that you'll get a dessert, a sweet keto, even though it's keto. And there's plenty of keto dessert recipes out there. I think it's unreasonable to think that you'll eat one of those every day after dinner and not have a problem with cravings. Now, it's new. you may be new to it, so you don't realize that. But that sweet taste in your mouth triggers cravings, and you will find yourself craving stuff all the time. So I like to tell people, enjoy a keto dessert, but pick you a day out of the week where you indulge. Whether it's Friday night with friends and family, or Saturday night with friends and family, or maybe it's Sunday lunch, or whatever. And make you a nice keto dessert. And I'm not going to give you recipes here, there's plenty of them out there. I would say the ones that use erythritol are probably the best. Um, But it's not hard to find a keto dessert recipe out there. The favorite ones that I've enjoyed, and uh, I don't make keto desserts really that much anymore. Um, I have found that a tablespoon of peanut butter to me is one of my favorite desserts. Uh, Once you get keto and you get the sweet taste out of your mouth, you'll be surprised how sweet just good old peanut butter will taste to you. And so I'll get me a tablespoon of peanut butter and, uh, you know, I won't eat the whole thing at once. It'll be like two or three bites of it. And I really enjoy that after a meal. And um, it does have a lot of calories in it, so you have to just be aware of that. But um, the one note about peanuts, if you're going to buy them, your pe- when you look at the jar of peanuts, it should say no more than six carbs. And two of them should be fiber. So you'll see carbohydrates, it'll say six. And right underneath carbohydrates, it'll say fiber. It should say two. That's that's because there's a lot of peanuts out there that have way more carbs and way less fiber. Uh, so make sure you get the ones. I believe it's Skippy Natural, I think, is my favorite. But uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there. So... Um, God, one of my other favorite ones was cheesecake. I like the keto cheesecakes because it's basically you're just eating uh, cream cheese, which is relatively good keto for you, and you're adding a few of the things in it. Um, I've enjoyed some of those. Um, uh, Peanut butter cookies, again, because it's just mainly peanut butter. Uh, When I first went keto, I, I didn't understand the issues with sweet things, and so I was like, I'm eating me something sweet every night at dinner. And I did. <clears throat> and it would primarily be peanut butter cookies. I'd have them every night. And um, I did that for a long time. And I lost weight and it worked. But I struggled with sweet cravings all the time. Because I was eating something sweet every night. But those are really easy to make. Uh, if you look up keto peanut butter cookies. Uh, pretty much there's a hundred places on the internet that have them. In the, and the recipe is almost all the same for all of them. It's basically just it's just peanut butter. Like a cup of peanut butter, one egg, and uh, like a quarter cup of a of a sweetener, like erythritol. It's got to be powdered though. If you get the if you buy erythritol, you're gonna have to put it in like a coffee grinder or one of those Nutri Bullets with the nut blade on it, and you got to pulverize it till it's powdered and not granules. Uh, but you put that in there, and that's pretty much it. You toss it in the onion oven and uh, bake it 15, 20 minutes, and uh, and they're good. They're simple and good. And uh, anyways, so to summarize about sweets, one, sweets are out. Two, when you do have, uh, there are ketogenic sweets and you can enjoy them. But my recommendation is that you enjoy them weekly. You pick a day where you have a sweet. Um, and even maybe if you have it at lunch and dinner, so you're having it twice. So maybe you feel like you're really enjoying the day. So keep your meal keto. And keep your treat keto and, uh, you know, make you some uh, keto cheesecake or whatever, the keto cookies or whatever. And have them with you after your lunch that day. Don't eat them as snacks in between. Again, we're going back to this. We don't spike sugar and insulin in between meals. We're only going to spike insulin and sugar at the actual meal when it's getting spiked anyway. When we're getting our nutrition in. So uh, have you a little, if that's, if you got to go that far, then do it. If it's your Saturday, then all right, I'm having my keto cookie after lunch or with my lunch, you know, at the end and at dinner. And then you move on from that. And uh, you'll probably crave sweets on Sunday. And when you do, just go, oh, man, Brett told me this would happen. 
Then by Monday, it'd probably be phased out. And, you know, Wednesday through Friday, right up to next Saturday, you'll be fine again. Uh, that's my recommendation. So I think I've covered everything uh, drink and sweets related. Um, it's it's not rocket science, this part of it. Um, it may, It's just common sense. Uh, the hardest part of it is getting your brain wrapped around getting rid of those things. But I promise you, once they're either out of your life for a while, you won't crave them very often. And when you do, the cravings will be very mild and they just won't be a big part of your life anymore. If this has helped you in some way, the most important thing you can do is hit the share button. You know how I found keto and lost 125 pounds? Because somebody shared something about keto on Facebook and I saw it. That's just how easy it is to change your life. Hit the share button. Share this with people on your social media, whether it be Twitter or Facebook. If you'd like to consider sponsoring the podcast, becoming a Patreon sponsor, a Keto Warrior with me, KetoAnimal.com. Head on over there. Don't forget to follow us on all the social media. Fat Guy Podcast is a username, and that is also the name of the podcast. Wherever you get your podcast, you can find us there. Subscribe. If you don't know how to subscribe on an iOS using the Apple Podcasts or on on an Android phone, then just go download the free Spreaker app, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Once you download it, search for Fat Guy Podcast, hit that heart button, sign up to get notifications, subscribe, and you'll be good to go. And thank you so much for listening today. I appreciate it.